So you do a business called Base Japan Direct. Right? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you tell me more about it? Sure, yeah. So um, Base Japan Direct, uh, the main crux of my business is exporting Japanese bass guitars. Um, I export all over the world to both to end users and also to partners as well. I have some partners in the UK and in Europe. Um, so, uh, I deal with high-end uh, Japanese brands such as Dragonfly, Moon, which is one of the famous ones because uh, of its most famous artist, Larry Graham, and Atelier Z, which is another one of the more well-known ones because of uh, their affiliation with Incognito, um, the London-based acid jazz band. Um, who else? Cheek. You know the band Cheek? Uh, from the 70s and 80s. Uh, they're still going strong today as well. The bass player from Cheek uses a, an Atelier Z as well. Uh, his name's Jerry Barnes. You might, you might have, you probably will have heard him playing. <laughs> <laughs> I could safely say that. <laughs> yeah, great bassist. Yeah. So those are uh, two of the, the more prominent bands, and then some of the lesser-known brands, such as Dragonfly, uh, who I love. Incidentally, they're my favorite brand. This, this one's a Dragonfly, this gorgeous top. This one's a Dragonfly 2. Um, and then Sago over here. Sago, like this one, which is uh, a very unique looking instrument with a wrap finish, you know. Um, so these are all uh, the main Japanese brands I work with. Um, in terms of new instruments, um, I also do custom orders uh, for those brands. Um, so a Sugi as well is another one, um, and on my website you'll be you'll see there are pages for each brand, and there is an order form as well that you can fill out, send it off, and you can get a quote for a custom order within about 24 hours. You get a ballpark. So with the Japanese brands, high end, mid market, and then vintage as well is is one major part of my business. So vintage bases such as old Fernandez, uh, Greco, um, for example, Araya, Matsumoku. Um, yeah, those are all great old bases. So that that's the Japanese side of it. Yeah. And do you also do import? I do, yes. So um, another aspect is imports, yes. So here is one of the import brands that I, I mean, this is a British brand called Alpha um, and this one is a very special instrument as you can see so they have unique design they're handmade entirely in Yorkshire England um, by Chris Alpha Dobson um, and his team they're a very very small team I think it's just three people okay yeah so Entirely hand baked, hand built, um, and he uses very fine materials. And you can see his designs are gorgeous. So they ain't cheap, but they're they're well worth it. Um, you know, he uses high end hardware by Hipshot, and he always uses Nordstrand pickups. Um, often he uses Aguilar um, um, preamps and stuff. Uh, you can get he does passive as well. I mean, basically, you can order. You can get these order made as well, um, but uh, yeah, they're they're high end. Like most of his instruments are sort of over three thousand um, dollars. That one is is getting on for sort of six thousand dollars. So <laughs> it's very special. And then um, you know another higher end British maker um, is Enfield, um, but uh, this one is. Uh, is about half the price of, of, of the uh, Alpha Day, so around $3,000. And what's unique about Enfield is they have these special pickups, which are called uh, Super Quads. And this is really their main unique selling point. Uh, the Super Quad has four settings. You can see the pickup illustration there shows you blue mode, green mode, and red mode. Blue mode is uh, humbucker, green is single coil jazz, and then the red mode is uh, precision split coil. Uh, mode. And that's all in one pickup. So there are four magnets. So that means you can get like 15 combinations 
in one base. That's quite okay, a lot. 15, 15 combinations in one base. Um, so the, the sound is insane. And uh, while I've been working with um, Enfield, um, they're made in England as well. Um, we developed this neck for the Japanese market. Um, so Japan has very, very uh, severe climate. It, this has a, a very rugged fenelic neck, fenelic and maple neck, um, and a fenelic fretboard. Fenelic is a wood which uh, is very hard and stable, so it's good for the Japanese climate. You know, so I think in Europe, in general, the the summers are not so humid. Um, and the winters are not so dry, so you don't get so like here in Japan. The the extreme is ridiculous from from winter to summer. So Japanese make their their necks extremely stable. Um, the, the build process is, is incredible. Um, the most stable instruments in the world, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, European makers, I don't think they know, so they didn't realize that. So they make instruments which are stable in their own environment, but not so stable um, in Japan, which is why we developed this neck, um, or rather, I, I requested um, they develop a neck for the Japanese market. So that works, and um, Alpha 2 as well, like uh, the, the bases that I have from Alpha have a slightly different spec neck to the ones that they usually sell. So these have a, um, a different truss rod and more support in the neck. So, and it's been very stable as a result. So yeah, so that's interesting, you know, this, the, the build differences uh, yeah. due to climate. Yeah. So those are two of the brand, two of the high end brands, and then we also have um, a a mid market cost performance brand from Europe. This is from Switzerland. It's called Tribe, um, and uh, they keep the costs down by having the bases partially uh, made in Korea, like the the necks are made in Korea and the bodies are rough cut. Uh, Korea, and then they're finished and assembled in Switzerland. And the hardware is proprietary, it's their own hardware, the pickups are their own pickups, it has a unique... The pickups are lovely, they sound very natural. Um, I really love them. And this is my personal one um, that I use and it's very reliable. I and love that... the finish as well. Yes, yes, it's such a simple finish, it's a kind of half matte finish. Yeah, very simple. Nice. So, and Tribe also make, um, you know, they, they make uh, like a, a traditional P base as well, uh, like this one. So, again, this is this has this nice matte finish. This one's older with rosewood. So this is like a, a 1960s P base, um, but. What I love about Tribe is they have this excellent hardware. These tuning pegs are better than, <laughs> I think they're better than the hip shots in some respects. Um, very, very nice. Um, and very affordable. Like this P base is like about $1,000, which is, okay. you know, not that much considering. Um, probably even less than that actually now because the dollar is so strong. I'd say it's probably down to about 8.50 okay. by now. Um, so, yeah, I thoroughly recommend Try uh, for people who are, want something that's high quality but uh, on a budget, you know? Yeah, and then the, you know. Um, so that's, that's, those are all the, the import brands I deal with, just the three. Great. Well, I have a, a YouTube channel, um, which has thousands, it literally has thousands of, of base reviews on it. Um, and also I have web pages uh, for the import brands. There's an import section on my website. And there are video samples there as well. Um, with I always record direct audio, 
So there's no EQ, there's no compression, um, it's just the sound of the bass. I use a looper pedal, but you know, that's it. There's no, there's no outboard EQ or compression. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's important because you mm -hmm. want to know how the bass sounds naked. Yeah, true. So, so those, I call them my naked sound reviews. <laughs> yeah, as a result. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It's that's the bass, way. just on naked as it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if you listen to his playing, you you hear that he's amazing bass player. So, so these services uh, he offers, um, the quality is guaranteed, and that's what I love about. Oh, thank bass you very much. Direct. That's very it's... nice of you to to say so. Mm. Yeah, I mean I'm. You know, I, I I just love bass guitar. So um, and uh, as uh, I've had some experience professionally as a bassist, uh, I I think I know what bass players are looking for. So um, I try to set up everything. Um, I try to set up all my instruments in, in in a way that they play very nicely, like a nice action that's not too high not too low um, it depends even if you like low action I'll set it up low for you you know um, that's fine so I find uh, you know different strokes for different folks uh, I've had some session players who have like immaculate technique um, they you know and they like to have a pretty low action um, but they can control their, you know, they have a very light touch. Mm -hmm. So their technique is so good that they can have a low action. Um, and then I've got some old school thunkers <laughs> who, who want a, a, a pretty high action, really, you know. <laughs> Which is cool. You know, that can be done too as well, of course. Yeah. And regarding setting up uh, bass guitars, you also... Uh, build bass guitars, right? Mm, build is a little bit... Uh, that, that's going a little too far. Uh, I don't build basses, but I do refurbish um, and revamp. And that side of my business is called... Uh, I call it Funky Jump. So um, I'll, I'll show you an example. Um, this is one that is nearly finished. Just working on. Um, so funky junk are, are old Japanese instruments, um, often component basses. Like this one is a is a 1970s fresher neck on a 19. I think it's probably a 1990s uh, Fender Japan neck uh, body. Sorry, Fender Japan body, um, and are, I often do things to make. Them kind of look a little bit more boutique and unique. So this one I've, I've um, laminated the pit guard and you know uh, we've got the control plate here which is separate from the main pit guard so that you can easily service it. You know I add things on some of them like a, like a series parallel switch for example and uh, this one I, I have my Funky Junk logo on the headstock there. Um, you know, and uh, the reason I do this is because because uh, I, I get a lot of um, vintage instruments in. Sometimes I, I have ones which have dug, like, you know, like I said before, I think 95% of the time they're all good. But sometimes I get a dud and I keep the body, but the neck is no good. So I have a body left over, pick guards, pickups, uh, hardware and stuff left over. And then I'll find... Um, I'll find something like a like a, a junk base, which is the body is trash, but the neck is okay. <laughs> I'll buy that in, and I'll uh, make something new out of it. You know, that's why they're called funky junk. So there's recycled old old junk. Yeah. You know, that people were just selling off or neglected bases that some granny found in their <laughs> their attic after their you know after their son moved out. You know. <laughs> That kind of thing. Um, yeah, so uh, that's become 
that's become increasingly um, uh, kind of growing um, side of my business. Yeah, yeah I love the doing, doing more and more and more of that. Um, especially because, um, like, it's basically custom made, right? Well, you can customize them. Like on my Funky Junk page, um, you can get in touch with me. You can say, hey, I, I want a jazz bass or I want a precision bass or I want something with a, a, a PJ or, or music P, P and Music Man pickups in it. Um, and I want it to be like on a, on a jazz bass body with a jazz bass neck. Can you do that? And I'll tell, I'll tell you if I can do it or not and, and kind of what what price you should expect mm -hmm. um, so yes I, I can uh, I can custom I can do a lot of things uh, to customize your your own funky junk um, mm -hmm. so for example I can also do um, color finishes with matching headstocks I'm not professional I'm not a professional finisher so the finish is not perfect but it can look very tidy like um, you can see plenty of examples on my on, on my web page um, yeah so um, I think the main selling point uh, is that you can get a good instrument which plays really well and sounds good and looks looks nice certainly on first blush it looks nice you know um, up close you'll see that it's not perfect but you know for the money I think you know I think I think it's good yeah um, I think there's there's value in it, um, and and it's nice to have something that's been it, it's been revamped. It's been given a new a, a new lease of life. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's very environmentally friendly as well. Yeah, I, well, I think it's it's better than just wasting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, it's just it's better than just just wasting a good neck and a good body. Might as well do something with it, you know. I, I, you know, I, I see. Sometimes I go around junk shops or I look on listings, auctions, and stuff like that, and I see stuff which is totally beaten up. Okay. And I fall in love with it. Nice. <laughs> and I just want to bring it here and do something with it, you know, fix it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make it work. Yeah. Again, you know. I mean, as a customer, like, it's so nice to have um, a custom made with a cheaper budget as well. Right. Like, uh, for example, this one. Um, yeah, that's your, that, that's your one. <laughs> yeah. And this is like my, my first bass guitar. And it's, um, so like, as a buyer, um, I wanted to have something special and unique, like one and only. But I, uh, because this is my first bass, I I couldn't afford like expensive money. So sure, yeah. So this was the perfect um, solution. And also, as I said, the sound and the quality is guaranteed because uh, he's he's not just a craftsman. He is also a great bass player and I think that that makes the difference yeah I mean yeah yeah first first of first and foremost I'm a bass player um, and uh, like yeah I guess I guess I could call myself a craftsman by now I think by now yeah yeah I mean I just started out doing it as a sort of hobby you know um, and posted about it and then I thought oh, this is a concept you a bit more yeah and I really enjoyed you know I didn't know that I would enjoy making things so much <laughs> but I really I love it I love uh, making pick guards out of pieces of wood you know and, you know getting the raw materials and working on stuff that way like you can it's check really satisfying yeah you can check um, all the funky funky junk bases uh, on his website which I'm gonna put the link in the description below so yeah, yeah that's number 48 so that's the 48th one yeah and that 
one. That one is a, a is an old Greco body, 1970s body, camphor and agathis, with a 1980s Araya Pro neck, and then it's got a brand new pair of pickups in it, mm. um, which are those are the Fender Japan OEM pickups. I think they're made by Goto. Yeah, that's been uh, growing more and more in, uh, yeah, getting more demand, you know, to, to make funky junks. It's like up, up for the past few months, just I, I had orders for funky junks every month. So um, I didn't have a chance to, I used to just make my own stock and then put it up for sale. You know? Then since I started doing custom order of funky junk, I <laughs> didn't have time to make my own stock <laughs> okay. until, until just recently. Yeah. Okay. So I just started on. I just almost finished fort number forty nine, and then I started fifty today. <laughs> yeah. If they are interested in funky junks or other products, where uh, where can they reach out to you? Well, the easiest way is, is straight through, my, through the website. I also, uh, I'm on eBay, I'm on Reverb as well, um, Shopify, and uh, of course Instagram, Facebook. Um, I do have a Twitter account, but that's not a good place to reach out. I, I okay. very <laughs> rarely check it. Okay. So, but Instagram certainly is, that's probably my main social media okay. uh, platform. Um, you can reach out to me there directly. That's linked also from my website. Okay. So, and uh, on the website, you can you can send uh, contact. You can use the contact page to to email me directly anytime. Awesome. Yeah. So I guess uh, th those are the main areas of my business: the uh, Japanese exports, the um, European. British imports mm -hmm. and then the, the funky junk and then as an aside um, I do a base hunter service or procurement service um, which is it's simply just if you're looking for something specific you can get in touch and say hey can you can you source this instrument for me mm -hmm. and I'll tell you straight yes I can or no I can't <laughs> okay. um, you know, and then we go, we just go from there. Usually, you just pay a deposit. If 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 you agree to have me do this, you just pay a deposit. Once I find the candidates, I, I'll let you know, and then we go from there. You know, and usually I work within. Uh, if you give me a budget, I'll try and work within it as well. So sometimes people send me send me um, stuff which is way too uh, specific. You know. Like they want this model in this particular color, and it's like, <laughs> if you, if you, yeah, you know, sometimes it's it's good to just open the scope a little bit and say, okay, I don't mind having it in a different color, <laughs> true, you know, true. you know, but apart from that, it's been uh, it's been successful so far, about ninety percent success rate on on the hunter and procurement service. So I can also. If you're having difficulty getting an instrument that you've seen in a Japanese dealership, I also, um, because I, I have connections with dealerships in town, I can also sometimes negotiate to get um, an instrument for you on your behalf, because oftentimes they don't answer their emails in a timely way, or they don't want to ship to your country. Mm -hmm. You know, I can help. That's, that's another side of it. That's great. Mm.